What's up, everybody? Welcome to Earth Science. It is time for minerals. Going to note sheet number one here. I did it in a different order. We did rocks first, and then we'll wrap up with minerals. Um, so, yeah, let's do it. So when we do minerals, what we're looking at is what are the building blocks of all those rocks that you looked at? I've got some here. And when you took something like, there we go, like this, if you remember the igneous lab, this was diorite. All those little bits in there are different minerals. And if you did a good job with your igneous lab, you would say, this is diorite. And now diorite has plagioclase, feldspar, biotite, and amphibole. That's what those bits are, are those minerals, which are made of elements. But the minerals is where we're at. It's the elements that make up the minerals are listed down here if you ever need those. Um, so now it's like, what individually are those bits? So what you'll do when you do this is when you do it, right? Which is me on a video again, but you'll have chunks that are only one mineral. Like, you know, this guy here, I've got a bunch here, this guy here, we'll have to figure out exactly what mineral this is off of this list. And these are all the minerals that make up the rocks that we've already studied. So let's jump in. Uh, the All Notes document, page one. What is a mineral? It's a naturally occurring. All right. Naturally occurring inorganic solid. All right. Can't be man made. Uh, inorganic means that it can't be made by any life processes. So that takes out like coal and all of those, um, solid, solid. They also have, and this is the harder part of the definition. And if you don't quite get this, I'm not going to panic. They also have definite chemical compositions and ordered internal atomic arrangements. All right. That's getting a little bit fancier. I'll mention it again quick when we get down to this part of the notes saying that the shape of the mineral is based on the, the ordered arrangement of those atoms in a matrix. But again, that's getting a little harder. We don't have to get that hard, especially this year. Um, let's just go through like, what are the things you do to do a mineral test? I don't know if we did some of this in middle school, maybe. Um, but if you used streak plates or if you used glass to test hardness, um, you may have seen some of this stuff before in your life. Um, so let's say minerals are the building blocks of rocks. Almost all the rocks that we've already studied are made of one or more mineral. And how are we going to identify them? Um, so that's what all these underlying things are, the things we'll look at to, to uh, study minerals. Color. Simply identify the color of the mineral. Very easy, right? Unfortunately, color is not really useful. Many minerals are the same color. There's a lot of white ones, a lot of clearish ones, and a lot of blackish ones. So color doesn't really distinguish at all between those. Also, some minerals have multiple colors. I could lay five different pieces of quartz in front of you, and you might think that they're different because you see a pink one, a white one, like a smoky one, a clear one. Um, anyway, so these are all different minerals, but realities are all coarse. So color doesn't really help. However, streak does, which is the color of a mineral when it is powdered. Right. In the lab that I do for you, which, you know, there's another one of these YouTubes. It's pretty easy. Just take one of these plates. Should be a cleaner one. All right. It's a porcelain plate. It's slightly porous. And you take the mineral and you scratch it, then you tell me what the color of that streak is. Believe it or not, that's more accurate and more of a tell than using color on its own. You use a streak plate, that's what that thing is. I mean, you could you could mash it into a powder, but that's what this does. The, this very slightly porous surface powders the mineral as you scratch it. So streak will be handy. I guess maybe I should pop over to the reference tables and say like, Here's what this thing looks like. It's the very back page of your table. Um, I probably should have gone in that order right across, but I didn't. 
streak will help out and things like this. It'll just be one of these distinguishing characteristics. If it really gives it away, um, that that's what that mineral is, it'll be there. So it's not listed in everyone because it's not necessarily useful in everyone. But if you see it in here and these distinguishing characteristics, that can help. And I believe I made the lab pretty straightforward. I didn't want to have it be too mysterious or difficult. You guys will do great. Um, luster. This is the first one on the table here. So luster. Whoop. Luster is going to be either metallic or non-metallic. And what luster is, is the way that a mineral reflects light. Not color, not clarity, and not even shininess, but whether it reflects like a piece of metal or doesn't. So let's grab an easy example of one of each. This one, and I don't know how great it is on camera. It's okay. This one is metallic. In the light, which is only working so well here in this classroom, it, it shines like a piece of metal. Shiny on its own does not mean metallic. Does it actually look like metal? Now, this one does shine, but it doesn't have that like metallic look to it. It does not look great on camera, but that's the downside of all of this. And again, when we actually do the lab part, I'll make sure that it's easy. You'll be okay. This little thin one here is shines, but is non-metallic. So does it like just literally does it like look like metal or not? That'll put us in either the metallics, meaning you're already you got those four. Those are your four choices for metallic off the back of your reference table. One, two, three, four. Or non-metallic, which is the rest. There's a lot more of those. It's not too bad. Um and that's really all you got to do. I mean, there's other ones. There's, and I sometimes I have students write it. Don't, we won't worry about it. Uh, pearly, shiny, glassy. There's different kinds of lusters that you'll describe should you do more mineralogy in the future. Us, metallic, non-metallic, job done. Keep it simple. All right, it's hardness. We have a hardness scale that goes from 1 to 10. This is the Mohs hardness scale. So these minerals are the definition of these different hardnesses. These numbers aren't something. Uh, Topaz doesn't have a hardness of eight somethings. It's just eight on the scale. And so these minerals stand for, they're basically like the indexes. I mean, if you, you can buy a box of these 10 minerals that you can use to scratch all the other ones to see uh, how hard something is. They're the index minerals. You can see if minerals scratch each other. So like if I had one in my hand, if I had this, if I could scratch it with the topaz, that means the topaz is harder than this. So this is less than eight. But if I couldn't scratch it with the quartz, that means that this is harder than seven. So you do stuff like that. You scratch them with each other. You can use your fingernail uh, at a two and a half. And you can use a glass plate at a five and a half. In the lab, that's usually, in a normal year, that's all you would do is just say it's harder than glass, which is higher than 5.5, or in between my fingernail and glass, or softer than my fingernail. But you can, this should scratch it. You can kind of hear that gnarly noise. Um, so this is harder than 5.5. And that is going to be good enough for us. Um, on the table, hardness is the next thing listed. So, like, if you're working through one, you can say, okay, the luster is this. Then the hardness is this. New York State hooked us up here because they put these in order. And there's some questions that may feel difficult if you don't realize that these are put in order. They go from metallics, softest to hardest, and then non-metallics, softest to hardest. And there's this one weirdo in here. Hematite can, can present itself as either. There's forms of both, metallic and non-metallic. But they put those in order, so that's really handy because there will be questions like, this mineral is harder than uh, dolomites but softer than plagioclase feldspar and has this other feature. And you'll have to figure it out. But the idea that that list is in order is crucial to getting those questions right. So, yeah, that's that. We'll use in class in a normal year, in a normal lab, fingernail at 2.5, glass plate at 5.5. And we'll know those three ranges. But we're not going to write that this year because this online stuff it is what it is. All right, the next one, 
cleavage fracture. These two like are together. They live together. If you go to the reference table, a mineral either exhibits cleavage or it exhibits fracture. So the check marks here, these have cleavage, these are fracture, cleavage, fracture, cleavage, 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 a couple fractures at the end. What this means is how the mineral breaks. If you take it and smash it with a hammer and break it into pieces, how does it break? Does it break along what look like predefined planes? Does it break so that, and you can see, almost see this little crack that runs parallel. So you got this side, then the crack, then this side. Like you see parallel faces on this. And if I broke this with a hammer, I would expect to see more parallel faces. Whereas this one just kind of like looks like random, a random rock, right? It looks like random breakage as that came off the larger piece of this mineral, wherever it came from. Um, so I'd say, what do you think? Here's one example of each. Camera's not great. But can you see how that one has like square, lots of like angular square flat faces. That's a good example of cleavage, random breaks, fracture. Not super easy. And in the video I did, I, I helped everybody out. So this is when a mineral breaks along predefined planes or fracture. This is when our mineral breaks randomly. Okay. I'll help you out in the video, make sure that that isn't like too mysterious. And then if you're using, if you're doing questions that just have like, they'll, they'll say it, whether it's cleavage or fracture. And let's just use this reference table, back page of the reference tables again. These are the cleavage ones with the check mark there. These are the fracture ones with the check mark there. Not too bad. Uh, special properties, mostly not useful, but if you find one, it's a dead giveaway. So salty tastes. Now, that wouldn't mean that if you were really doing this lab, that the first step you do is go lick all the minerals, besides being gross. It's not an effective test for almost every mineral, except for that one that does taste salty, which is salt, is halite. Um, smells like rotten eggs. Is uh, sulfur. I don't think I have any here, but especially if you scratch a little bit and smell it, it smells like rotten eggs. You guys probably know what sulfur smells like. Uh, maybe it's magnetic. Again, it's not, it shouldn't be your first instinct to like, okay, grab a magnet and you know, put it on every single mineral. Yeah, it's a dead giveaway when you find that one that's magnetic. It's magnetite. It probably says right here. Yeah, magnetic. So that's those will be the things that like you look in here and you see, uh, oh, it has a salty taste. That's halite. Bubbles with acid. That should be the calcite. You know. What things are kind of unique to that, to that specific mineral? All right, we're getting long here. Let's just say for all this, minerals get their shape because of the way that the atoms are set up. If you take salt, it's sodium chloride. Sodiums and chlorides like to grab each other at 90 degree angles. So when you take billions of those to get a chunk of salt, it's going to look just like the same way. It's going to look like a cube. And that'll determine its cleavage and its fracture, ideas like that. Um, this really thin one right here that I had is mica. It's flexible in thin sheets. It says that on the thing. And the reason that they're thin like this is because it's a, it's called a sheet silicate. It's this guy right here. Those, those little tetrahedra like to grab each other on the side and make like big blankets of molecules, layers. I don't know what to call it, but. That's the idea. We don't have to fill out this because I feel like we're getting a little bit long. But the atoms themselves determine the, the properties of the minerals. And that's really what this crazy sentence up here meant. Ordered internal atomic arrangements. But that's getting a little bit harder. We're not going to sweat it. Try a couple questions if you want. We'll do the usual. We'll do some practice and we'll do the lab. And, uh, and then we're getting close to done with rocks. So thanks, folks. Keep it up. We will talk to you soon.